about some cut food. Okay, wait, wait, just ask a question. Country is so we can get that again. Thank you. Rick? Yeah. Ma, what kind of country is this again? Huh? What kind of country is this again? Alabama? I said it was War Eagle country. What kind of country did you say it was? Oh, I forgot. What did I say? Rough woman There you country. go. <laughs> I can shoot a gun good as I can cut wood. Uh, I, <laughs> but sure enough, when the boss would get so mean to us, we could go to the supervisor. And buddy, he'd straighten him out. He'd mean tell the him quick. Now him, I can get me another supervisor, but I can't get another hand so good. Yeah, they'll tell them that now, even in our plant. They'll tell them that uh, supervisors, they can get them off the street. They ain't, they ain't got no job security. That's supervisor, right. They'll tell you that, quick. That, uh, that's right. I train a supervisor in a day, but uh, somebody's filling batteries or back winding or spooling, it takes years to get, get them trained good. Well, right down here in this mill, when I was in the hospital with my kidney operation, um, Mr. John Tilly was my boss man. And I had just come out of the hospital that day. And he come out there for me to come to work for him. The same day you was out of the hospital? Yeah. And I went to work at night. I went to work that night on that spooler. It was automatic spooler then. And uh, this girl, she dead and gone now. But anyhow, uh, she kept laughing at me because I couldn't do so good, you know. Just come out of the hospital. Of course, I'd been sick 14 weeks. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, she come out laughing at me, and uh, so Mr. Tilly told her, says, says, I went and got this girl to help me. He needed a hand, you know, to get that thread. Well, it was a mill then, you know, it was weaving and everything then, you know, that just back, you know. So well, you asked her about the... Uh what we call now sexual harassment, but put it in a different way. Did, uh, did you ever have a, a supervisor come up and uh, try to get you to say, well, if you'll go off with me, I'll make it easier, make your job easier? Or did you no. know anybody that ever had no. to? No, because I always kept them set down. If I, feel, if I felt like that they wanted to hanky-panky, uh-uh. Did that ever happen to any of your friends? A supervisor ever come up to them and try to not proposition? As I know not of. as you know of. Not as I know of. Uh, I want to talk about a little bit how hard it was during the Depression, how you couldn't get a job. And remember you, you was telling me that time that you couldn't find, you know, you didn't have nothing to eat and how you had to take care of your baby and all that. I'd like for you to tell me about that again, if you would. Okay. Well, I just couldn't get no job. And I had to scrub floors and sweep yards and push grass mowers. You didn't have them with gasoline on them then. You had to push them in the yards up in town. All these here rich people. You know where the Burkhead home is? I think so, yes. You know where the A&P is yes, now? Sir. Well, you know that big restaurant, they turned it into a Green, fine restaurant. Greenhouse restaurant. As Miss Burkhead, I worked for her. Well, was there ever a time where you didn't have enough to eat? And uh, I know you was telling me that one time where you went so many days. That's right. That's when I lived up on Dayville at the backwater. I went three days a night for nothing to eat. Three now, days. that's right. And nursing a little baby. But when I did get something to eat, I got me a piece of cornbread and a glass of water. And I felt like I had had a meal to little. I wasn't hungry no more. The Lord provided for me. He takes care of me. I'm not worried. I don't have no worries because I know he takes care of me. He said we live by bread and water, but not bread and water alone. That's true. Uh, let's get back to when Roosevelt got to be president. 
you know, it was, it was still depression days. And some of the things he did to put people back to work, you know, some of the things you can think of and some of the changes he made for the working people that, well, he that made are still a here lot today. Of changes. That's the best president we've ever had. I agree with you. That's right. Uh, can you think of anything right offhand? You know, like we was talking about, he changed it from 12-hour days to 8-hour yeah, days. Yeah, he changed the shifts, and I took the third shift. And uh, then they signed us up for our Social Security. Why and did you take the third shift? Ma, why did you want the third shift? Well, I liked it better. Any, I liked the third shift. Any particular reason why? Well, I could do my housework and work too. So you still, even though you had to work, you still had to. But take I had care to rub my clothes on a rub board, and I had to iron them with a with a. I got the iron sitting on in the hall, a old stove iron. I've seen them. And I had three children in school, but I washed my clothes on a rub board, ironed them. I washed them one day and ironed them the next next day. And I'd sleep a little, and I'd done my cooking. Did uh, when after Roosevelt got to be president, things start picking up? What did uh, he? Uh, could, could we go back on that? Because I want to say we need to be very definite that she was on the third shift, and that she she was working at night, and she was doing all this work in the daytime. See if you can get her to do that again. Just That's how it basically, goes uh, yeah. we won't get back to why you was on why you had to work the third shift. Well, I just liked it. But, uh... See, some of our audience is not going to know that the third shift was at night. Oh, we want... Well, that's so she can just... Third shift, the, third shift, that was at night. Yeah. And you had to work at night because yeah. you had a family. That's right. So tell me about how, you know, how come you had to work at night on the third shift. You know, tell me how you had to take care of your family. Even though you worked full-time, you still had to take care of your family. Well... I'd I'd stay up at day uh, up till about seven about seven o'clock and then I'd lay down at eight at night and get about two or three hours of sleep and I'd go to work. Third shift then that was from eleven at night till seven in the morning. That's then. right. And you would stay up all day till seven o'clock that next night. Yeah, about all day. You'd have to. You take care. You take two children and a husband. That's four to take care of, and yourself. That's five, and you have your mopping to do. You had your dishes to wash, had your clothes to wash. I don't know how you did it, Mom. Well, I done it, and I worked nine shifts down there in this mill when I come out with my heart attack. I worked the night. I had the heart attack. You did. And the boss man tried to get me to come home, but I didn't want to. I stayed on till 7 o'clock that morning. And then I went to the hospital that night. I got, oh, I got my husband. I told my husband he wasn't dead then. I told him it, to get up. I said, Sanford, you better do something for me or I'm going to die. And he called my niece, and she took me to the hospital. Uh, but I worked, I worked double shifts. You know what I mean? My husband had already retired. You worked double shifts. What do you mean yeah. by double shifts? Well, I worked first. I worked on the first shift. Tom, I worked. I go to work at night at eleven. Uh -huh. All right, at eleven. No, yeah. I'd go work at night at 11. Well, I'd get off at 7 in the morning, you know. Well, I'd go home, I'd eat me a biscuit, drink me a little coffee or whatever, I, bacon, egg, or whatever I wanted. I'd lay down and I'd sleep till about 11.30 or 12. And uh, I'd get up, help my daughter cook dinner, and then... Uh, at three o'clock, guy, guy, man, uh, what was his name? Guy, I can't think of his name now. Right off the reel. But anyhow, 
he'd come and come. He'd send a Sam clock out there at three o'clock. He'd say, Lucy, I want you to come in and work. I'd go in and work, and I'd work till, I'd work then till 11 o'clock. Well, I'd take my shift right on through That's till good. the next morning. Non-stop. Now, did Esther, if the, if the husband uh, helped with the children or housework and all that kind of stuff? Did uh, your husband, did he help you with the children and help you do the housework? You know, when you was working the third shift, did he help you out? Did he help you cook or clean no, the house? No, he couldn't boil water without scorching it. He didn't help you clean the house or nothing? No. Boy, my wife makes me help her. Well, and he he didn't me. Uh, she don't make me, but I. But help now her. that was my, that was my husband before I married Mr. Griffin. Uh -huh. But the children, he had two little boys and I had one little girl. Uh -huh. See, that was the three children. Did uh, he help you with your housework, any? Who? Mr. Griffin, Mr. Griffin. Yeah, now Mr. Griffin helped me a lot. He did. After he retired, yeah. When and you were still working after he retired, right? Yeah. That's when you was, was that when you was working? He died Georgia? in 75. 75? The year I retired. I see, mean, the year they retired me. See if you can talk about babysitters and how people handle their children when they go to work in the morning. When you, uh, did you ever have to uh, have babysitters when you went to work? No. You, who watched your children for you when they, when, you know? They watched themselves. So what you did is you wait till they got old enough. How and he, and he is enough. on the first Sorry. shift. Let's he would watch again. after them. Okay, so they watched herself. He watched he he watched the children while I worked. But I'm talking about when y'all were both working. Who watched them then? Well, he was on a different shift than me. He was on the first shift, and I was on the on the on the third and first and uh, second and third shift. I can understand that because you know Ann. Yeah. She's on the first, and I'm on the second. And that way, he would watch him at night for me. I, I watch watch her during the day, and then Ann, she's home at three, and she watches her. But I divorced him when I married Mr. Griffin. Mr. Griffin. Yeah, and then I went. Sure enough, on the on the third shift, and I stayed on it. But uh, then uh, you never y'all. I didn't have no, no little children uh, when me and him married. My girl was grown and married. Uh, I guess. What, ask her about uh, uh, what it was like living in a mill village and neighbors and so forth. When you lived in mill villages, uh, what, tell us a little bit what the neighborhoods was like and some of the stores maybe they had in there and things like that. You know, just kind of tell, tell me anything you remember about living in a mill village. Well, now, I lived in the net in the mill village and I had good neighbors and it was, it was nice. Did uh, mostly it was people you worked with that lived next door to you, wasn't? It? A lot. Mm. No, they didn't live next door to me. I had good neighbors. Was there anything special you can remember about Mill Villages? You know, some, maybe something special that was about them that was better than living somewhere else or anything like that? Well, now it, it was a good house. Did the company keep it? The uh, company, the company they keep kept it up? them up. Yeah, you didn't have to do a thing but just live there. That's right. Did they, Did they charge you any rent for it? I don't think they did. So if you worked for he them, he took care of all of that. Your husband. Yeah. But I don't think they charge rent for the mill either. Do you they remember? give them that to work in the mill for Do you remember the if they rent, had you know. places for the children to play? You know, like maybe a playground or anything like that in them? No. They didn't? No. Was it, did you, you remember a lot of children being in the mill villages? Oh yeah, there's a heap of children. Well, did they uh, just play? They the played school? around the house, around and, house and, and with one another. But they didn't have no playgrounds or no nothing like that then. Uh, 
let's talk about a little bit about when Roosevelt was president. Okay. And she got, after Social Security and all that, did uh, your working conditions improve any at all? That oh, you can yeah. Remember? Oh, can yeah. Can you tell me some of the they things? They speeded the, the mail up then. They speeded it up? They speeded it up, yeah. Can Can you remember uh, a lot of times they, they might have speeded them up and uh, it made it harder on you sometimes? Sometimes they would, yeah. It certainly would. Make it a little hard on you, they certainly would. They get them running so fast, you know. And they have, uh, did you ever see when they speeded them up, they ended up laying off, started laying off people because the machines might be running a little bit faster and they don't need so many people in. Yeah, yeah. Have, did you ever notice them, uh, like, say, like you was running, just say, for the sake of argument, 12 sides of a spinning frame? And all of a sudden, they lay this person off beside you and, and make they you give them the, their twelve sides too, yeah. and make you run double jobs. Did you ever see that yeah. happen very much? Did you? Yeah. Did okay, you, uh, let's see if she can describe that. Uh, telling about somebody who was in the mill who had that happen to him. Can you tell me about somebody that might have happened to, and uh, how hard it was on them, and was they able to do it? Well. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you about my husband down in, in uh, Pepperell. Uh, they laid off a man and give him a whole side of a of spinning, you know, to lay up rope in. And he told me he wasn't going to do it. And he come out and he drawed his pennies. He did. He went to Montgomery and got his pennies. Did uh, it was hard. Was it hard for him to get his unemployment? Well, it was pretty hard. Lawyer Brown, he died, but he was the one that got him for his. So he just he just flat refused to do it. He certainly did. They laid they fired this man. They laid him off. They fired him, and give Mr. Griffin a whole spinning room to lay up roping on. He just told me he wasn't going to do it. You know, uh, they still do that today, but uh, where I work at, us having a union, if they make me run two jobs, they have to pay me double pay. But they don't do him. They wasn't him. They are going to make him do it for the same pay. They, they and that's why he uh, told he me he wasn't going to do it. He refused. But he might, if they would have offered to pay him, he might have would have tried. He might have done it. But so he couldn't do it. They tried to do that to me where I work at, and I, I went to my union shop steward, and he went and told him. He said, "Look, if he runs two jobs, he gets double pay, or he's just he's not gonna run two jobs." That's right. It wasn't just a few minutes. They come out there and said, "You run two jobs, you get paid double pay." That's right. That's one of the advantages. But they wasn't gonna do him that way. They what? You think maybe if he had a union, that he might have could have yeah, at least negotiated with him. You know, talked about it. He had to run two men's job for the price for the of same one, pay. and he wouldn't do it. See if you know. But now I ain't run no two jobs for the price of one. And if I cut off pieces, I didn't make as much as a spool of hand. But when I cut off pieces, and they put me to spooling, they pay me spool wages. Whatever that not. Tied, I got paid for it. Was it production? When you yeah. spoon? Um, ask, uh, see if she knows what kind of stretch out. We talked about what you, you remember we talked about stretch out on the audio tape? Remember, remember when me and you was talking on that tape? What we, really what we were just talking about trying to make somebody run two jobs. Yeah. That's called stretch out. Have you heard that term before? Stretch out? Stretch out. No. I just, know that he said that they m tried to make him run two jobs well, that's, for the price of one he wouldn't do it. Well that's what's called a stretch out. Yeah. I, I didn't know that, about that phrase till a, a month or so ago myself. But I'm going to tell you things are better when President Roosevelt took over. Did they uh... Yeah, that, that, when she started they just let her go. Go ahead and tell me something, something about the better things after he took over. Well uh... He changed the shifts. He changed. He cut it up to three shifts. He gave us our social security, 
and uh, it just made things better. And we got we got a whole lot of stuff that we didn't have. Did she ever hear him on the radio? Did you ever listen to uh, President Roosevelt when he was on the radio? Yes, sir. And I listened to him on on the radio, but now he. He wasn't on TV. Well, he didn't have there wasn't no TV. Then. But I was listening, and I listened to the Grand Ole Opry. We had a radio, but we didn't have no TV. What were some of the things Roosevelt told you over the radio that directly affected your job as a textile worker? Can you remember some specific things like he might have told you about he's going to put in three shifts or the Social Security? We've already talked about that, but is there anything else you can remember? Well, no, I I don't remember. I really don't remember good about him talking much on the radio. I sure don't. Did you ever see Roosevelt? Did you ever see President Roosevelt in person? Huh? Did you ever see President Roosevelt? Yes, sir, and chuck his hand. You did. Well, let me shake your hand. I sure well, did. Well, tell me about that. He come through Lynette, and and the mill stopped off, and we went on the side of the road, and I caught hold of his hand and shook his hand. Well, did he say anything to you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, say? sir. What did he say to you? He says, thank you, lady. Glad to know you. I bet that made you feel good, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Sure it did. Did you remember him that uh, asked about it, it being a cripple to keep it shut? Do you remember that uh, he was paralyzed, had the polio? Oh, yeah. He went to Warm Springs. I've been all through his place up there. I've seen all of Warm Springs. I've seen the pools where he went in. I saw the bed where he died on. It was in his little house. The little white house little at White Warm house Springs. Warm Springs. His rooms are his office is there. I mean his desk and his bed he died on. His maid room was next to him. I've been all through that up there in Warm Springs. When she met Roosevelt, did, did he look like he was crippled? And his car's there. When uh even the car he drove is in Warm Springs. When you met President Roosevelt, did he look like he was crippled then? Did you tell he was crippled? No, he was sitting down he in was, a car. He was? Yeah. What, you just walked by and shook yeah. his hand like you? Yeah, you know, just the car come along and he shook hands with him. So you really couldn't tell that he was, that no. he was crippled? No. Did she ever write him a letter? Lots of people wrote Roosevelt. Did you ever write President Roosevelt a letter? Huh? Have you ever wrote President Roosevelt a letter? No. You didn't? Um... Uh, No, I never did write him a letter, but he was a good president. Yes, he was. He brought about a lot of changes that are still helping yeah, working he made, people today. He made a lot and lots of changes. Did uh, did you know that President Roosevelt is what made it possible, if I'm not mistaken, he's the one that made it legal for us to have unions, or had a lot to do with it. Did you know that that uh, that he did that, or it made it possible for a lot of textile workers to have unions? No, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that, son. But I hadn't, you know, I hadn't heard him say nothing about that. How did you but he that? made a lot and lots of changes. How but union that? is a good thing to have. I'll have to say that. Well. Why didn't you have it back then? What? Why didn't... Uh, can you any reason you think of why you might not have had a union back then? No, I don't. You don't. They didn't even mention union. Maybe not as I remember of. Did but she remember anything about the, the big thing in '34 when the troops were out? Do you remember it? And we talked about this on the audio tape. You weren't working in the mill in 1934. I know that. But do you remember when they had the big strike and a lot of people went off the job and they called the National Guard in and a lot of people got hurt and killed? Remember the pictures I showed you, the funeral and all yeah. that? Do you remember anything about that happened No, then? I don't remember that, son. 
Is that 19 what? 1934. 34, let's see. No, I don't remember that. When she was going to the movies, did she remember seeing newsreels? When you went, when you went to the movies, you remember seeing newsreels? Mm-hmm. Did uh? And of course, you probably seen President Roosevelt a lot. Some on the newsreels. Did 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 you? Uh. Uh-uh. What what kind of news did they show you on the newsreels? But they showed cowboy pictures. No, they, you know, a lot before the, before the movie, they sometimes they show what they call a newsreel. It'd be news about World War Two or news about the Depression. You, you remember them having anything like that at the movies? Uh uh-uh. uh All you went to see was like Hoop Gibson and and uh, uh, uh. Just cowboys and, you know, cowboy pictures and John Wayne and all like that. Stage coaches and things. You know, I don't remember the newsreels. We was talking about earlier how, out there on the porch how different things in the mill, even though the machines are modernized, it's still called the same thing like me and you was talking about krilling. And uh, you know how how they we still got weaving and slashing, but you know you was talking about how you had to tie the ends up. Now they got the machine that does that. Yeah. And what it's doing now is it's cutting out a lot of people's jobs. Yeah. Just like you did when they're cutting out these garbage trucks, they made that thing to dump That's it. That's exactly right. Well, they took two men off of there. See, that took two people off of there with it. You know they pick it up with them arm raw arms now. And that's that's exactly what the textile industry is doing right now. They're putting in machines to take our place. That's right. They certainly are. Take our jobs away from us. Call them robots. Mm-hmm. And you punch a button and make that thing do what it wants to do. That takes away the labor from the man. Ain't that right? That's correct. That's right. Uh, now, ask Grant about the military. Just to get him that takes your labor you, from the man. You remember when you uh, you worked in the mill? I I've had people call me this before, but not lately. You ever remember anybody saying the phrase uh, "lint head"? Yeah. How do you feel about somebody when they said "lint head"? Well, I said I'd rather be a lint head than to starve. That's about what I told him. <laughs> That's exactly what I told him. I'm not ashamed I worked in the mill. The cop mill give me my work, give me a raise my baby and raise my family. I'm not ashamed of my job. I wish to God tell me I could go back to it today. I'd take it. I can take it up here, but this old body's done gone. Oh, no.